Lawmakers are taking aim at vaping, hoping to get youth to stop using the products. Efforts have fallen short in the past, but now there is a new sense of momentum given the current crisis. To date, eight deaths and hundreds of illnesses have been linked to vaping across the country. The Utah Department of Health reports 47 cases of severe lung disease related to vaping nicotine, THC, or both. It's been frustrating that this issue has kicked down the road for so long because now we've we've reached a real public health crisis. Representative Jennifer Daly Provo is a member of a vaping work group looking for answers. She plans to run a bill to restrict where flavored e-cigarette products can be sold. Well, if we were able to move forward on a complete ban on flavors, I would support that as well, but I'm pragmatic and I understand there are a lot of interests at play and if we can't get an outright ban on flavors, then we at a minimum need to make sure that we're protecting kids. Representative Susan Pulsifer is also part of that work group. She plans to tackle the issue at the school level. A bill she's working on would outline clear guidelines for administrators or teachers who catch students vaping. That way, an um, administrator or a teacher could take that device away and test it to see if it has uh, uh, other harmful drugs in it and then at some point dispose of it. Her bill would also add preventative education to school curriculum, a bipartisan effort with a new sense of urgency. I think some of the events of the last few months have helped to indicate to parents and young people that vaping and e-cigarettes pose a much greater danger than they had anticipated. Representative Paul Ray is working on a bill to ban e-cigarette flavors altogether, and Senator Alan Christensen plans to run a bill to significantly increase taxes on vaping products.